Okay, so here's the problem. We have this reaction. These are initial moles in each case. All right? And so, in this question, the first one wants to know, is the mixture at equilibrium? Okay? And then the second part of the question, well, we'll get to that. But if it's not, what happens? Okay? So, let's get our K written out. These are all gases, okay? Uh, one thing that you'll need to know, the K, when we write out Ks, they need to either be gases or aqueous, okay? Otherwise, we will leave them out of the equilibrium expression, okay? I'll go into a little bit of detail in class of why that happens. But essentially, here's K. Uh, these are in moles. They're, well, let me write out K first, and then we'll discuss that part. Open it down here a little bit. K equals the products SO3 divided by the reactants SO2 and O2. Okay? And there's one more part I need to put in these. Do you remember what it is? Yeah, when it's balanced, you got it. These coefficients need to go here. It looks like it's all balanced on both sides, so I need a 2 here and a 2 there. You square, you put whatever that coefficient is, you raise it to that power. This is K, specifically K sub C. That's the first special kind of K you've learned. So, what you might notice is you've got to make a change up here. These are all in moles, and you want, but these have to be in molarity because they're concentrations. So we'll need to divide everything by the volume, which is given in the problem. Let me find it. 1.9 liters. So the volume, I'll put it over here, 1.9 liters. So everything needs to be divided by that number. So your text actually found that. So let me write down. So the actual concentrations, again, divided by that uh, 1.9 liter. The first one is 0 0.239 molar. The second one is 0, 0. Uh, 0.963 molar, and then the last one is 0.299 molar. So I'm expecting you to be able to calculate that. Just divide by the volume. Okay. This is Kc. That means that all of these values are at equilibrium. Okay? And let me see if it gives you K in the question. It doesn't. It does not. Let's see. It must have given it to you in a previous problem because the question is expecting you to know it. Yeah, it has to be given to solve this problem, so it must be somewhere else in the text, or maybe this was an example problem. So given, let's keep it in white as a given, you would have to know KC to solve this problem. Okay, so given KC is equal to 280. And we're going to have, whenever we write K's, they're going to be unitless. You're not going to know why for a while. Uh, but once we get to the end of the course, you're going to learn why they're unitless. But it turns out that um, the way we write these, even though there'll be leftover molarities, this is, in, this is not the true way that K is actually written. But we spike the problems for you so that it always works this way. You're going to find the actual way that we do it at the end of the quarter. So anyways, this is KC. Here, when you look at this K, all these concentrations are equilibrium values. So if you have all equilibrium values here, you'll get this number. If these are not equilibrium values, you will not get this number. So we introduced this top concept to you called Q. It's kind of like K's ugly cousin. And Q is actually pretty much the same formula as K. SO3 squared, but I'm going to put this little knot here to mean initial concentrations. 
SO2 squared with a little knot and O2 with a little knot. Those little zeros there mean the initial concentration, so whatever you're given. So if you're not sure you're at equilibrium, you're actually going to use Q. Okay? So I'm going to put in these numbers here into Q. I'm going to use this Q equation to test if I'm at equilibrium. Okay? At this point, it might seem a little more meaningless to use this Q, but it becomes helpful as we get to more complex problems. So, you plug in SO3 is 0 0.299 squared SO2, 0 0.239 squared O2, 0 0.0963 and that value turns out to be 16.3. Okay, so are we at equilibrium? Part A, no, not at equilibrium because Q and K are not equal. So when Q equals K, we're at equilibrium. Okay? When it's not at equilibrium, then you need to justify, I think that's what part B is about. Part B says, if not, what direction will a net change occur? Okay, so in this case, if it, to get this to K, we need more of what? More products or more reactants? Reactants. This is missing reactants, that's why it's so small compared to 280. Does that make sense? It's really tiny. Uh, if there were more reactants, this would be, you could get it up to 280. So since Q in this case is less than K, uh, so B, Q is less than K, It needs to shift, remember Le Chatelier's principle, it needs to shift to reestablish equilibrium. It needs to shift such that we make more uh, products, in this case, the SO3, so that it becomes a bigger number. Does that make sense? Okay, so we need to shift which direction, left or right? Uh, Does that kind of make sense? Wait, we go is this like relative to K or Q? Rel K never changes, so only Q can change. So in this case, in the red case right here, we need to make more products. Is that okay? So we'll shift to the right. We'll lose reactants if we shift to the right and gain more products. Is that kind of okay? So, yeah. Any questions on this one? This is your standard type of problem with this. They get more complex over time, but it's a pretty typical type of problem.